Hello folks and welcome back. Today I'd like to tell you about the recording software that I use and that is Mixcraft 10. But first just a disclaimer, I do not work for Mixcraft, I'm not paid to endorse their product. I am simply a customer and have been so ever since I started recording back in 2011. I started on version 5 and have updated progressively right through to the latest version which is Mixcraft 10 and that was introduced in June 2023. So let's get right into it. Right, here we are in Mixcraft 10. Let's just have a quick look and see what this recording software is all about. First of all, on your left hand side here, these are your different tracks. Now as you can see I have five tracks up here, one for drums, bass, acoustic guitar, keys and harmonica. Now over on the right hand side is your clip grid and these separate items are known as clips. Now these are what was recorded into these tracks on the left hand side. So first up let's just take a listen to this particular one and I'll press the transport button here to play and we'll hear what we have. Now, first up, let's just have a look at these clips. I'm going to just enlarge this track and watch how I do that by hovering over the join of the two tracks. You see my mouse cursor changes. I can click and drag it to any height that I want to. But just for demonstration purposes, we'll see with this clip, we can move it anywhere we want to. Let's get it back to the start. If I right click over here in this top part here, we'll see that there's a number of other things that we can do. It can be colored, cut, copied, deleted, split. Uh, we can have a look at the properties of those clips. We can put envelopes in there to fade in, fade out, or to boost or reduce the volume. And there's a whole lot of other things which we're going to deal with in a later video. Now you'll see these three little buttons up at the top here. The first one is to play the sound. So if I click that, it plays that complete sound. The next one is to mute that clip. So that won't now play at all. And the next one is to loop it. So if I click it once, you see it loops, it doubles in size, click it again. You can loop as many times as you need to. Just undoing that, you'll see in the top half of this clip, if I hover over the end, I get that little two-way arrow. I can also drag it out that way as well too. So let's just undo that. And now just moving over to the track panel here first up there's a nice new feature in Mixcraft 10 and that is the ability to rescale it so if I come up here to view and you'll see it's currently scaled to 100% let's take it up say 130% now that makes it a whole lot more visible and it's very handy when you are actually working on the track itself and you can see everything up close and very really clearly. So let's just go through these individual items on the track. First up at the top here is your pan. Now you can pan that to the left or to the right depending on where you want to do it just by dragging it. And if you hover over it and double click it brings it back to the center. This one is your individual volume for each track. Again just slide it up, slide it down, when you want to double click it 
and it's back to its original default position. Over here is the chromatic tuner. Uh, if you've got a guitar, for example, you would just click that and you can tune up your guitar before you start to play. Then you have the ability to monitor. So if I click that, whatever I'm recording, in this case, my microphone, you will see that it's showing over here. You will be able to hear that during playback. Next up, there's a mute function. If I hit that, it mutes this particular track, but not the others in the project. And the reverse of that is solo. If I click that one, it'll solo the drums and mute everything else. Unmute and unsolo those. This next one is automation. Again, we're going to deal with this in another section of the video series that I'm doing. But that basically allows you to automate that overall sound. In other words, you might want it a little bit quieter in the verse and a little bit up in the chorus. That's how you would use automation. I'll close out of there. And the next one is the effects. These are effects that you could add to the track. Clicking that, we have a choice where you could load an effects chain. Now this is something that has been pre-set up and has been optimized for various instruments. As you can see, we can have the bass, drums. There's a whole lot of effects in place which you could put up and use as a starting point right down to vocals. Okay, so since we're dealing with drums, let's just take the first one. And you'll see it's got a number of effects already in place and set up. I'll just use one for example, this compressor. Now, we're not going to go into any depth here. As I say, this is an overview and it's really aimed at total beginners. I'll go through and explain everything in later videos all about these different plugins as they're called. Closing out of there. So you'll see that those effects are now added into that track. You can show or hide them just by dragging. Again, you see the cursor change. I could just drag it there, we could hide them. But let's bring them back. And I want to just show you another way to add effects to a track if you want to add just a single effect. If I click that one, and let's just, we will disable all of those. In fact, let's get rid of them just by doing that and that. So there are now no effects on this track. This little plus button. We could hit that. And again, we have a list of all the possible effects that we could put on there. There's a ton of them which come standard with Mixcraft. And again, we will deal with effects and plugins in a separate video. So there we have it, two ways to add effects. And as I say, you could show or hide them as you please. Now we'll need to know how to arm and set up our tracks. So first up, if we click this little down button, you'll see we have this dialog open. This little switch, by the way, if it's switched off, you would do one and it would close. But you can do multiple actions with this by keeping it open. So let's just take a look and see what we have here. First of all, we have our input source. OK, that could be either stereo or left or right channels or depending on how many channels you have. You see, I just have an audio interface with two channels, a left and a right. So, for example, my microphone at the moment is plugged into the left hand channel. I would then just select left. And if I arm that track, you can see I have level. There is the level itself there. And then we have different recording modes. 
takes or overdubs or replace. Again, I'm going to explain that in another video very soon coming up. It just basically gives you different options on how to record. And of course we have what we've already seen here, we can monitor the guitar tuner, arm the track and arm it for recording. Of course once it's all set up with the correct input and input level, which we are again are going to deal with later, you could arm it from there just by clicking that arm button and there we are ready to go. And I'm just going to bring this view back again to the default of 100 and now I'd like to go through preferences that's this little gear icon here and you can see that there's a whole lot of categories in here that you can go through to change the way Mixcraft behaves now again that's a subject for another video but I'd just like to bring your attention to first of all the plugins and in particular the plugin manager now you can see here there's a whole lot of them I must just admit that there are some third-party ones in there which I own personally but the ones that come standard with Microsoft are going to be more than enough for you to produce great sounding productions and they're easily sortable either by manufacturer here you can even group your favorites together like I've got amps and compressors and EQs frequently used okay and of course they can be sorted by name alphabetically or oh, here you'll find we've got some of these are blue some of them are yellow the difference is the blue ones are effects the yellow ones are virtual instruments. Again, we're going to deal with that. Don't be worried about these terms. And even those can be sorted. If I click here, that'll show me all the effects first. And if I click it again, it'll show me all the instruments first. And you can see that there's a whole lot of instruments there. Again, there are some of my third parties. But really, it's quite amazing the array of instruments that you can get up with Mixcraft. Right, I'm going to just close out of that one. And one final item in preferences is this new addition hotkeys. Now effectively that's your shortcuts and you can now add your own. So if we take one of these categories, for example, edit, you'll see there's a lot of them already in there. Okay, but then these other ones that are blank, you could create your own. Now, you can see there's lots of different categories. For example, in Mix, we've got some presets, but there's space for you to add any other ones that you like. It's just a nice additional feature and it's great to help your workflow. Well, thank you for watching. And I do hope that you're going to be able to join me on the rest of this journey. If you do, the next video is right over there. And uh, of course, don't forget that if you wanted to subscribe or check the rest of my channel content, my man in the corner there, Herman, you just tap him up and uh, he'll get you sorted, show you all the videos and the playlists that I have. Take care. See you in the next one.